So now we're going to cook up some delicious, very classic, very simple beef burgers. Um, you know, I don't think burgers need to be messed with too much. You know, if you've got great mints, um, chuck steak's great, but you can cut it with some like leader cuts as well. Get your butcher to mince it for you or do it in a food processor uh, if you prefer. You know, nice kind of coarse mince is great. Um, a little bit of fat's always good. Um, and you know, I don't think you know, I don't think you have to mess around, just a little bit of seasoning, great fillings, um, and that's all you need. If you want a, a more healthy alternative, um, turkey and thigh mince is great, or breast mince either works really well. Um, similar principle, but obviously you want to cook it the whole way through because it's poultry. Um, and you know that's you know, and with that guacamole we're gonna make, we're gonna make a nice griddled guacamole with some yogurt stirred through, um, and that sort of combination just gives it you know a little bit of a healthy edge, taking away all the cheese and the mayo and all that usual sort of indulgent stuff, and replacing it with really good nutritious avocado. I'd always recommend making your own burgers. It's really really simple. Um, you know you don't need to mess around too much. Really good. Um, quality steak mince is great and that also means that you can cook it if you prefer it a little bit rare or a little bit medium rare you know like you get in lots of good burger joints these days um, you know, you're allowed you know you're able to do that because you've minced it yourself you know where the meat comes from um, we've got this this is chuck steak which has got sort of 20% fat which is a good ratio keeps it nice and moist and juicy without sort of drying out or being too fatty and too greasy um, Get your butcher to mince it for you. Pretty much every butcher will be able to offer you the service. You know, buy, you know, get the steaks whole and ask them to do that. Or if you would like, you can do it in a, in a food processor at home. You know, just pulse it a few times to get that similar texture. It'll work absolutely perfectly. Um, and I think it's really important, yeah, to get you know good quality meat. Try and spend a little bit more money. You know, these are cheap cuts anyway, and it's worth spending. And it means you'll just get you know a really good burger. You don't need to add fillers and bread and onions and all those sorts of things. To the burger you can just keep it nice simple really really great mints. So now we're going to go ahead and cook the burgers. Um, these have sort of been chilled overnight to rest they're going to be nice and firm and we put a bit of oil on them before we put them in the fridge so they don't stick to the plate or to each other and you keep that nice shape. Um, it's important when you're shaping them earlier on not to force the meat together because otherwise you'll end up with quite a dry compact mix. So just you know gently roll it into a ball, press it flat, you know about 1.5 centimeters, 2 centimeters is absolutely fine. Um, you know, don't worry if it's a bit misshapen and a bit uh, sort of raggedy at the edges. Absolutely fine. It'll cook perfectly. Um, and then just before cooking, I always just dimple into the centre of the burger, and that stops it kind of bulging as all the juices and the pressure in the burger as it cooks. It will expand, so that just prevents that from happening. It keeps it nice and flat and even throughout cooking. Um, and then a little bit more oil before you put it on the grill. Just like this day. Um, you just want to coat them nicely and then make sure your grill is nice and hot and this, you know, the oil obviously ensures that it doesn't stick to the grill which is fantastic um, and that's it you know don't, don't be afraid to get your hands in there cooking is always supposed to be fun um, and there you go nice high heat see the smoke coming off the barbecue. When you're forming the burgers, obviously it's, it's a raw mixture and you're not going to taste it until you've, you've made your finished burger. So the best way to check the seasoning is add all the salt and pepper you want, gauge it, and then take a small pinch, you know, a, a kind of thumb-sized little piece of mint, flan it out and just fry it in a small pan for you know, a minute or so until it's cooked through. Um, and that way you'll be able to test taste the seasoning and you can add a little bit more, take a little bit more off, you know, fry another little bit if you're a bit worried about it, and then you can eat, then you, you're kind of ensuring that your burger is perfectly seasoned and you're ready, you're ready and ready to go. So alongside the burgers, um, sort of as an alternative to that kind of standard stodgy mayo and cheese and all that kind of greasiness, you know, we're trying to be a bit more a bit healthier um, on our barbecue. So what we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna we've, We've got some avocados here, some nice ripe ones, not too soft, but you know, quite firm. Um, I've kind of cut them open and we're just going to twist those and then take out the stone. And then, exactly like we did with the burger, a tiny bit of oil, only a tiny bit because avocados have their own kind of, kind of very oily in their own right, you know, full of great fats. Um, and then we're going to stick that in the sort of in its skin directly on the hot coals. Um, ready to serve alongside and then what we'll do is once it's cooked and it's 
you know you just want char lined you don't want it too hot um, we'll then scoop it out add it some yogurt and some coriander and some red onion and garlic and lime and lots of you know lovely kind of traditional guacamole flavors um, and then mix it all together and we've got a lovely kind of creamy guacamole in place of all that you know traditional mayonnaise and cheese So sweet potatoes, often underrated, um, really, really lovely ingredient. Um, yeah, part of the same family as potatoes, but much, much sweeter. Um, you know, and they kind of caramelise when they cook for a long time. They kind of ooze out all that stickiness. Um, mainly come from the um, from the US. Um, very popular. You know, sweet potato fries are becoming more popular, kind of baked in the oven. But it's, you know, I think the best way to do it is to wrap them in foil. You can either bake them in the oven on a really high heat, or do it, or do it directly on your hot coals. Um, and then you just turn them sort of every so often. You can use your hand, or some tongs, or some castle. I mean, they're not too hot. Um, um, and then turn it every, you know, five minutes or so, and cook them for about an hour until they really can feel that you can press them with some tongs. Feel that they're really, really soft inside. The skins might be slightly blackened. Um, and you'll get this kind of, it's almost like soft, sweet mashed potato in the middle. Perfect alongside these burgers. Great for the kids as well. You know, that sweetness will you know, definitely go to enjoy.